Yo, we are back once again. This is the Channel 10 Podcast. It is I, Sing God Superior, the Almighty AR, still on hiatus, as we all know. And with uh, all that said, you know, uh, you know, it's going to be funny for me because this episode is pretty much kind of like, a, it, it, it will feel like a new episode to me because... All of the episodes you guys have been hearing, you know, they, uh, you know, they've most of them have like happened weeks, you know, weeks before, weeks even a month or so before I even put them out. And one thing, another, one more thing that I do want to address is, yeah, we've been, you know, or well, I've been out the loop a little bit, but a lot going on, and so you've seen that the frequency of episodes has gone from, you know, almost once a week to now like once a month. Uh, maybe two a month, and so what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to come out with uh, an episode bi-weekly since I got a lot going on. I got the Wu-Tang Podcast going on, Wu-Tang Podcast on Apple, uh, iTunes, Stitch, or whatever else like that. So, uh, you know, check that out too, but nonetheless, we are here. This is, uh, um, well, technically I have a guest, but... Uh, at this point, I don't really consider him a guest. I just feel feel like this is like a regular episode. He just, you know, he's like Arctic's ghost right now. Put it that way. So with that said, I got, I got real from the "We Will Never Be Famous" podcast in the building. What's good with you, man? So we'll, we'll change it to you know just "We Will Never Be Famous," and uh, <laughs> and uh, we'll, we'll just kind of leave it at that right now. Okay. Well, yeah. Well, you know, uh, I guess we we both kind of feel the hurt of you know our counterparts in this whole thing but <laughs> yeah you know i feel you sometimes you just gotta keep moving on and this, this is nothing about this is the thing about podcasting too um you know it's not like scripted it's not radio you know you're not really under contract you can just make it yourself and one of the troubling things about a podcast is like you really think about it it you know it doesn't when you start out with it and since there's no like really struck like no real structure to it you never know when it's going to end. It could end tomorrow. It could end next week. It could end, it could end a few years from now. But you just never know when you're going to end, how you're going to end. And so this is one another reason why I like this medium because it's like so open ended and everything like that. Sure, sure. I mean, I, I fuck with it. You know, um, I really fuck with it because it's before certain people like Oprah started doing podcasts it was like the great medium like you know it didn't matter who it was you know it, radio was always that beautiful thing it was just the voice through the speaker you know what i mean and you tuned in when you wanted to hear that particular bit of information and then you tuned out when you didn't want to hear anymore you know it wasn't a bunch of fanfare and a bunch of bullshit you know what i mean like i mean you know aside from the commercials but i'm talking about the purity you know and the sound of just selecting a voice and sticking to it so podcasting for me that's what kind of really drew me to it because everybody you know like youtube um was able to have a voice and everybody was able to create that radio type of atmosphere and um there's a therapy in that you know what i mean there's a therapy in just kind of hearing the voice you know not necessarily having to be a face and this whole personality and this whole genre of everything's a personality like sometimes it's good just to have a voice you know what i mean and i mean I don't know. So, like, podcasting is shit to me. Uh, my whole thing, podcasting, is I always got random shit to say at random times. You know what I'm saying? So, like, if I did, like, a podcast show, it would be, like, on some shit where it's, like, I would just be, like, getting on the phone and shit and just saying, like, yeah, just, uh, you know, recording the podcast and saying, like, random things. Oh, yeah, today... I went to the uh, the mini mart and just burning out a top. I would have this long conversation. I swear, just my phone walking down the street, talking about how you know what I'm saying. It's like inhumane, and it should be against that corporate structure. And I would talk about how people should be fired. So podcasting for me is really just going to be a problem once I really get into it because people are going to get annoyed with me. You know, so I, I read somewhere, and I think I, I may have this statistic wrong, like the numbers wrong a little bit, but. Um, I looked at this presentation on podcasting or whatever, or I guess PowerPoint slides, and uh, it said that four out of every five podcasts, uh, you know, stop after like a month or so. It's crazy thinking about that, and 
you know, the people like Oprah now, you know, who they're in, you know, they're into it. You have you know, these podcasting or at least, you know, uh, podcasting semi empires or whatever you want to call them. You know, where Pete, they have their full time, a full time producer, you know, everything like that. And, you know, now that, you know, although, you know, people, everyone has a voice and, you know, you can, be, you know, get above it. It's even harder now because of the amount of advertising that's going to. You know, the so-called, I guess, more professional podcasting. So it's not like kind of, it's not like guerrilla podcasting, like how this, well, I would consider this still guerrilla podcasting, sort of, you know? Right. The purity that attracted, like, me to, like, when I was listening to Joe Rogan podcast the first time, and I know I always bring it up, but it's one of my favorite podcasts. And the first time I listened to it, I mean, I know who Joe Rogan is. So, of course, I went for it for the name. What I really grew to like about Joe Rogan is like when he started doing commentary for the UFC. I like to hear his spin on things opposed to kind of see him say it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So in the podcast, I kind of had that opportunity to do that. Now, I know it's live stream, but I had the opportunity. I had the choice. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to fuck... Like, fucking Oprah's everywhere, okay? Like, why the fuck does Oprah need a podcast, dude? Like, she that bored? Like, you got billions of dollars. Go build an island. Another one or something. Like, for real, like, half the Bahamas just got wiped out. Oprah should just go ahead and just build some islands. The Oprah Alien Island and get it popping. You know what I'm saying? Stop podcasting. Leave that shit for us. Like, damn. You got to crush every media. Like, <laughs> can a motherfucker get something, Oprah? Mm -hmm. I ain't hating on you. I'm just saying, can I get something? My bad. <laughs> I got Oprah beef, yo. I got Oprah beef. <laughs> I got Oprah beef. I mean, real, I was, yeah. I like, was you know how that, um, Huh? Terry Park, I got beef. Uh, Barbara Streisand. I got Oprah beef. I mean, I wasn't even... I mean, I didn't even know she had a podcast until you just said something about it. Oh, yeah. It's major. Like, it was a big deal. Like, she had a commercial to build up for it. It's ridiculous. Oprah. I'm like, what is it? <laughs> she the shit though. She the shit. I can't fart. Like I'm not hating on her. Trust me. Like she's an important figure in our society, in our country, you know, in our culture, you know, in our history, in our legacy. You know, she's important. Like shit, absolutely, unequivocally. But she don't need a fucking podcast. Like, go do something fucking else. Like, you everywhere, dog. Like, damn, can a nigga get a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I go to Home Goods, there's Oprah. Fuck, man. <laughs> I go to Walmart, there's Oprah. Rite Aid, Oprah. Walgreens, Oprah. Oprah's fucking everywhere. Magazines and everything. Oprah's everywhere. That's very and true. If she's not there, her sticker is. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I saw an advertisement once in this gas station. And over top of the sign, I swear for everything, dog. It said, as seen on Oprah. I don't even know what it was. But it was like as seen on open. I don't even remember. <laughs> but that's how they sold it. Said, oh shit! This was on over. Mm. Damn. I mean, well, you know, I then I don't know. I mean, well, I, now I kind of want to hear a podcast to see like how it is oh, at this point. <laughs> oh my god! You should have heard, including guests such as. It's like she was just like pulling the dick out and just rolling it out on and coil and all over the place. <laughs> Slapping everybody along the way. <laughs> like, seriously. It's like a billion podcasts already. And then Oprah just comes in and just... Like the fat kid in the small pool and shit. Like, fuck you, man. He took out half the water. It's warm now. It's not even <laughs> fun anymore. It's like, like, just a little bit on nose. <laughs> 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 Fucking Oprah, man. Uh, You're just uh, too big. Just fuck off. Go do something else. Like, there's so many other things. That you, go create a whole new media show. Like, she should have been the first person to have a virtual reality talk show. <laughs> she should have been it. Like, that's what she like. If Oprah had Oprah's publicist, ain't shit. Because I'd have had Oprah, the first virtual reality publicist. And Oprah the shit, because she'd have been able to sell her own, like, the Google note about to come out, right? Mm hmm. She just sold her own Oprah headset. She didn't even really give that shit away for free. Like, <laughs> you know how that bitch do. Like, I'm telling you, yo. Like, she she fucked up. She fucked up. Like, I, I'm telling you, like, she need to hire me. She need to hire me. That that's a billion. That's another billion dollars for right there. So I mean, so you, I mean, you. So you just brought up um, tech, uh, technology and everything like that through AI, artificial intelligence. 
And, you know, we've been speaking up about podcasting and now, you know, Spotify is, you know, kind of taking a, a deep dive into podcasting and everything like that. And I remember that, you know, I always heard about Spotify and everything like that, but I th- actually, I, th- I think I said this on the last time um, I had you on here that I didn't really get to experience the, you know, Spotify, like the fact that there was a streaming service until I hung out with you for like a night or so when you were using it when no one ever even thought about it. And uh, and so, you know, with that, um, I'm curious to know, how do you feel about Spotify getting into podcasting and what do you think about artificial intelligence right now? Everything is an acclamation, dog. Okay. Now that's going to sound left field, but let, let me get into it. Okay. Because everything that comes along, what they do is they make it cool first, right? And then as soon as it's cool, you stop paying attention to it. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So let's let's think about this. Hover hovercraft things, the the little drones, right? Mm-hmm. When they first came out, right, it was like, look at this, it's cool. You can take pictures, you can go hunting, you know, it's so useful, right? And then they had it at the uh, Super Bowl, like, look, it makes all these shapes in the sky, right? And they did that shit live on TV and everybody's clapping. It's cool. Yeah, right. These fucking things took on shapes in the sky right in front of your fucking eyes. This is technology that can be brought now, all right? That means that it's purchased on the open market. So mm-hmm. anybody can buy this technology. So when you look up and the cloud was there and it ain't there no more, hmm, is it cool now? Like, so AI, right? Mm-hmm. I'm watching uh, Nickelodeon the other night with my daughter, and uh, this show comes on, I Frankie. The topic that we ended and with make- last time. Right. Come, see? Come on now. <laughs> Full circle, dog. <laughs> Full circle, dog. <laughs> Don't make me get born on the line, nigga. Start bringing up some subjects in this bitch, nigga. Like, come on, yo. Like, I'm <laughs> like, I'm saying, like, this little this chick, you know, she she's a she's a droid. She's an android. She was, and they're making it cool. I'm not get it. It's not the first thing. It's not the first time. You understand what I'm saying? Like, there's been shows like that when I was a kid. I remember it came on Disney Channel. You know what I mean? Like this dude, and it was this show that came on not so long ago, and this little motherfucking hand with a belly button. But what I'm saying is they are continuously, look, it's cool living in outer space. It's cool. Robots. It's cool. And hey, if they get out of line, Will Smith will kill them. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's, it's like the genuine, gradual getting you conditioned into this being a normal part of your life. Okay? So... Every time we get a bigger, more severe destruction movie, right? And the insensitivity of human beings and the legacy of that, right? Mm-hmm. Like, so when shit starts blowing up around us, we'll just like, ah, and go on the business as usual because we've genuinely been gradually conditioned and already f- fucking with it. So, I don't fuck with AI. Um, as far as, I don't, I don't, I don't fuck with it. Like I, I see its uses and its infinite possible uses, absolutely. But they should contain that shit to only specific things. Like some of that shit on the open market is fucking dangerous. All right, it's uncontrollable because anything. It's like judo. You feel me? Like you leave a fucking arm out there. What up though? You leave an arm out there and you somebody gonna grab it and gonna smack it. It's a wrap though. You, you know what I mean? They're going to get that arm, they're cracking it. You, you left it out there, you left it hanging, they're mm-hmm. taking advantage of it. That's how it is right now. These cyber terrorists and things like that and this piracy and all this other shit that's going on like this. <laughs> and they want, yeah, let's put artificial intelligence out there. See, so artificial intelligence. So, um, you know, I'm kind of leery about it too, but, you know, you got like Alexa going on right now. You have Cortana, you have uh, Siri and shit. And... You know, I've been hearing all this shit about artificial intelligence, ambient computing or whatever like that. And after a while, like, because I've been listening to, like, certain tech podcasting and everything like that. And so I try to get Cortana out of my computer, which is, for for those of you guys who don't know, uh, if you're not into tech or whatever like that. And if you don't have, like, a, a newer computer, right? Because I knew, I know that the last time I got a new computer was almost like, you know... 
shit, five, six years ago until I got my newest computer. So anyway, Cortana's for like Windows 10 or whatever like that. Windows, I think it was Windows 8. Anyway, it's like a personal assistant and, you know, you can just say, hey, Cortana. And then, you know, it comes on, yada, yada, yada. And I was kind of scared because I thought it was going to turn on. I'm doing this. I'm using the computer right now. Like, you talking shit about me? Anyway. <laughs> Um, you know, you do that shit, you know, ask, asking them a question, if they're human, you know, one plus one or whatever like that. And, you know, I, I kind of think it's dope a little bit, but at the same time, you know, like, from what I hear, like, it, it technically is still listening to you to make sure it doesn't hear you say, you know, hey, Cortana or something like that. God damn it. See, it, it, I don't know. I don't know if it, that, did you hear that? It went off. Yeah, did you hear it though? Yeah, see. See ya. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, yeah, that shit is freaky. And I'm going to tell you, it was even more fucked up. Like, I'm a hypocrite. And I'm going to tell you that right now, live to your viewers, to your listeners. I'm, I'm a hypocrite, y'all. And I'm going to tell you why. I just got this new phone, right? Mm. And it's not nothing spectacular at all because I'm not that type of dude, right? But it do it do different shit than my last phone day, you feel me? So I'm kinda of caught up to the time, feel me? So this shit <laughs> yo, this shit got Google everything, okay? And it's like, hey, try the new Google assistant. All you gotta do is just say, Okay, Google, et cetera, et cetera, and it'll do whatever you want, you know, and boom, right there. You know, ever since I downloaded that shit, son, I don't even pick my phone up. Like, I just talk to it. And I love it. I love it. You feel me? I love it. And that's the worst part of it, yo. That's the worst part of it, yo. That's the worst part of it. See, because I know I'm not fucked up. I know I'm just going to use it for what it is. And I like the technology. It's great. It's an awesome tool. But the fact that people can use that shit against me makes me not want that shit even fucking exist. Mm. It's a ladder, dog. <laughs> you know me? Tell somebody to tell me, yo. Like, if you run across that nigga, yo, tell him I said it was good. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, we existed for eons like that, dog. Like, we all got our messages. We all knew who was alive and who was dead. Like, I'm just saying. Well, you know, that's that's very true. I mean, yeah, well, I, like, the last time I, u- I even used Cortana, unless, you know, well, it just came on for real. I didn't use it, though. Uh, was about, you know, two months ago because I'm just not into it. But... You know, like they, you know, they say nowadays that, you know, like the new frontier for technology is the home. And so they're going to try to be, you know, you know, have artificial intelligence control your lighting. I have your your phone connected to your phone connected to everything. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Yo. Dog. It's this website called Dude I Want That. (laughs) All one word. Dude, I want that dot com. And I'm gonna tell you, you just gonna say, yo, I want that the whole time you look at this website because it's the pro title. And uh the shit that they have on there, like like again, I'm a nerd, so all that shit is awesome. We talked about comics and sci fi the last time, so I'm into that shit. So all that shit is awesome to me. It's like, yeah, ooh, technology. Trust me, I I get it. But again, it's just that general shit. So but when we move past that shit, dog, like shit right now, I watch this whole video. Where the room is wired to charge all your devices wirelessly while you're sitting there. Mm-hmm. Like you walk into the room and it's just one giant charging room. And as long as you're in there, your phone charges. It's going to be rooms in people's houses where your phone just charges. Like American little bones that guys, but eventually, why? Yeah, it's gonna be free. You know, like because if they want AI in your house, then yeah, it's gonna have to be free. Somebody's gonna buy it. I don't know how, right? And it's, and it's gonna be free. Think about it. And then AI is gonna be all over your shit. Everything, everything you do. I remember Amazon had these little buttons, dog. Uh, like you buy the buttons from Amazon, so you just request them. They ship the buttons to your house, and yeah, then if you ran out of whatever the fuck it was, you just press yeah. the button. And then yeah. they ship it to you. That's crazy. Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the <laughs> dash buttons, yeah. And and now they now they digitize them, so they just have them like on the on the right side of your screen, saying, "Oh, yeah." Well, I guess I'm 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 gonna know the other way around and shit. So, like one of the things that I keep buying. 
<laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> it's like the app that took over the world, yo. Like, yo, they, they, I mean, they have it. Like Nelly, made, like, like Nelly, made, like it's the shit how they doing it. It's the shit how they doing it, though. No disrespect to them at all. It's the shit how I they mean, doing well, it. Well, I mean, well, it's, you know, well, it's, they made it less expensive. Like, you know, it's more, it's more attainable now for more individuals. I, I fuck with it. You know, they they had the money to kind of well, do that. The issue is that it's more, but it's problematic though because. You know, we can get into, you know, horizontal growth, you know, uh, uh, uh you uh, know, uh, you know, <laughs> am, I, am I falling for the, am I falling for the players? Yeah, am I falling for the fireworks? Yeah, it, no. I mean, you know, issues about a monopoly and shit, you know, I mean, you know, like there's so many things that you could talk about when it comes to, Am. I mean, it's kind of scary. I mean, Amazon and Facebook, Amazon has your social life. I mean, no, my bad. Facebook has your social life. Well, your actual life. Amazon has your shopping life, and with that, just your psychology. Yeah. And Google knows everything that you feel when you feel it, my nigga. And I mean everything. And they tell you that they're doing. Have you ever read the terms and conditions? Like, I went through this the other day. I, I, I was trying not to do that. And you know, intentionally saying, "Yeah, we're requesting to have this type of access." Because we utilize this information to enhance our uh, searchism's, our searchism's understanding of your further like usage of the whatever whatever system. So basically, in 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 nigga, I feel what you're saying in terms. Yeah, we collecting all this information so we can know what you're going to do you before you do it, or around approximately around the time you're about to do it. Like, come on, yo, they're clocking you. And then I'm watching TV with my nephews, man. I'm watching TV with my nephews. The whole thing came on television. It's like, know your history. Know your legacy. All you got to do is go to this website and then get this swab. You stick yourself or you spit on it. You mail it back to us and we tell you where you came from. Man. Mm -hmm. Talk about a way to get to know everyone that's everywhere and who exactly they are. <laughs> You think it's the fucking information. You think they send it to you and that's it. They just look it up, they close their eyes, they put an envelope and mail it to you. The fuck? Mm. <laughs> How do you think funds this place? Oh, it's so cheap. How do you think that's so? <laughs> Come on, man. I'm trying to start a business right now. I know for a damn fact you can't just up and do some shit like that. <laughs> well, yeah, well. We gotta, we gotta have access to so much data, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. The amount of research that you'd have to do off of a spit molecule and cotton swab? Like, come on, son. Come on, son. I'm just saying, that shit was horrifying to me. Like, I mean, I never even called the police. I feel like I've said this before. I had 30 years old. I've never called the police in my fucking life. And like, now you want me to send you my DNA? Y'all don't even mad me. And I'm supposed to send you my blood sample? Fuck out of here. Hmm. <laughs> so you just so I just realized that um Jesus who died when he was thirty three I believe yeah. I believe so if I'm if I'm incorrect I don't know uh, it was thirty two I'm thirty two thirty three somewhere around <laughs> <laughs> but how he raised the crown bro you know what I'm saying I um. Uh, I uh share no comparison. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean if if I die at thirty three, <laughs> it's gonna just be because of some fucked up water <laughs> <laughs> I I like I I love how we're like, you know, pretty much t like talking about you know, using the same the same topics from last time and shit. Mm hmm That's crazy. Cause it's all relative, yo. That's what I be trying to tell niggas, bro. Like, that's how you know when you really fuck with something. When everything connects to it. It's very true. It's and very when true. you open up the show talking about, you know, like your love for podcasts, it's all relative, yeah? It's all relative, yeah? yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's essentially what we try, what I want to do with the direction of the show. Because really, um, you know, I've got some things going um, in very recent history. Mm -hmm. You know, this going to benefit, you know, the first man of what we're doing that we will never be famous. And, you know, it, it, it's good. It's good. I'm, I'm going to be doing shows. I'm going to be doing podcasts. You know, I'm going to have a couple guests. You know, it's probably me, you know, solo for, you know, without 
him in luck because he's going to do more. We're going to do more media with him. Like, we're going to do more videos, and we got a couple of things that we've been already shooting and teaching together with the guys and all. So, like I said, the YouTube channel is about to be popping for real. That wasn't a lie. Like, the YouTube channel really is about to be popping. Uh, I said, real lucky. And it's on YouTube. It says you write to the channel. We will never be famous. Uh, he actually uploaded some content recently, I think, today. So just check that out if you get a chance. And if you follow us on, if you want to look me up on Twitter, you know, I follow Shane God Superior and the, and the podcast. Um, never be famous 07 on, um, on Twitter. Never be famous 07. Yeah, content about pretty much each and everything, right? I mean, each and every. Each and everything. I mean, pretty. You talk about politics. You got, you know, shit about games going on. I think I, I saw a tweet from you about the Ravens the other day and everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, big time Ravens fan over here. Absolutely <laughs> so. And that was a that was a shout out, man. Twenty to nothing. You know, first game of the season. You know, unfuck wittable. You know, that's all I'm saying. You know, and he went in kick field goals the whole game. Like it wasn't even like. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A field goal type of game. We actually scored. Like, you know what I mean? We, we played offense and we played defense. Like, I'm not mad. I'm not mad at all. I can't even, I ain't even yell at Flacco. Dog, I ain't even seen that Flacco the whole game. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Like, I'm a new man. Look at me. I'm changing. <laughs> yeah, you, you are a new man because, uh, you know, let let me tell you, uh, man, well, you know, well, real is, you know, we, we're cousins, but, you know, back in the day when the Ravens like would go to to the NFC Championship when like Flacco was a rookie somehow some way, we we yeah. would always chill on you know every you know Sundays you know when we could get up or whatever like that. But I remember this one time it was the I I think it was I think it was the semester. I mean, it's see this is bad when I start thinking about time and semesters. Hell yeah, but all right, so yeah, so the year when they went to the AFC North Championship, but I think they lost to the Steelers because they missed the they missed the field goal or whatever it was. No, 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 it was the, the touchdown issue, right? It, it, it could have been either or because fucking Stover, okay? Like, let's not even get there, you know. But anyway, yeah. So yeah. So 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 <laughs> yeah. I'm with you. I yeah, so yeah. It, it, so I so the game that we watched it was it was the one it was the Patriots against the um the Ravens I think I think uh Brady's ankle was kind of like messed up and so it made it harder for him and uh I'm pretty sure Ray Lewis was probably about 4 to 5 years from from his retirement and uh yeah Flacco and we wa- in the basement somewhere basement of someone's house and you just kept going off about Flacco <laughs> Although they won eventually, but I think it was a wild card game too. But yeah, yo, because he's soft sometimes, yo. Like you know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, what are you falling down for? Ain't even touching yet. It's like you just want to go out there and punch him. Like yo, man, not nigga. Like grab him by his face mask and give him a speech or something. Like kick him. I don't know. Like that goes just makes me so angry because he got the he's he got an arm. He's got an arm and he's not. And he's game intelligent. He really is, all right? And I don't feel like I give him that credit to, you know, like you. You know what I mean? You know, people who watch the game with me. But he is game intelligent. I give him that, all right? However, he be bitch made way too fucking much. And that's my problem with Flacco. Man the fuck up and make a play. Push that bitch. You a six foot something, my nigga. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Falling on the ground, you puss. Like, they're not going to give you a flag. They never give you a flag for that shit. And you keep crumbling. You're not Brady, yo. They don't give a fuck about you. You in Baltimore. Welcome to the city. Man the fuck up like the rest of us, nigga. And deal, yo. Get us some points on the board. Stop putting in on Tucker. Trust in Tucker, yo. You can't be doing that to him. He the man. But I'm just saying, yo, fuck, nigga. Let's get some points on the board. And he did that this game. I can't say shit about him. He did that this game. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy. Good win. Good win. You know, uh, it's you know, it's unfortunate that people can't be like you know Kyle Bowler. You know, say what you want, but he was a rugged quarterback. He got smacked all kinds of ways, and uh... God, <laughs> really, dude, Kyle Bowler. You know what? I can't find. I can't find statistically. Kyle Bowler was. I mean, man. I was going. I mean, see, the, the, like the, I think I, honestly, I think it was. Um, I can't even think of his name right now. The, but the. Uh, the person, the coach who won the first Super Bowl. Um, Brian yeah, Billick? Yeah, Brian Billick. I was about to call him, 
was about to call him Earl Bullock and shit. See, like the thing was, I feel like Bowler. See, Bowler. It seems like if you, so. You remember when Bill, when uh, when Billick like he he took over the offense for like two seasons, but it still didn't work out, and he like he called the plays or whatever. Yeah. He was still under because he didn't he didn't want to get rid of Bowler because he he had faith in Bowler. Like Bowler, I think the thing was. Bowler just didn't he didn't have like the right kind of coach for him because the thing was like. He, I think Bowler has more accuracy than than Flacco because Flacco doesn't have any accuracy. He has the arm though. He does have an arm. Flacco has an arm, but Bowler had more accuracy, and Bowler had a decent arm on him. But I don't think he could fling it the, like the you know like the the way that uh, Flacco did on his on his uh, playoff run. But I think that if he had that kind of person that kind of like show him a like, more of a laser focus. He would have been like way better, but he got better at like over time, though. Well, true, he did get better over time. Um, what happened to him? Did he get injured? Uh, see, the thing—I mean, he got injured in between, but the thing where they still kept him, and I just think they—that's um, a good. Yeah, what happened? See, I, I remember they got Tyrod. You no, know, that was the same. That was the same time they got Flacco, right? I don't know because. I, yeah, uh, when he got injured, we, that's when we went Trent Dilfer and we went to the Super Bowl, right? Oh no, no, Kyle Bowl is that after the Super Bowl? Because so remember, it was it was uh, what the fuck was that guy? Anthony name? Wright. I mean, the Anthony Wright was uh, uh he was kind of Bowler's backup, I think. No, who was before Dilfer? Uh, Gerbeck. Ah, uh, yes. Home, but, but the home, but then, but wait, but then, but then we we had Testaverde right before. Testaverde, I think he was the first one, right? Well, like, wait, wait, like, well, one of the first, like, you know, ones that you can actually like talk about, I guess. Oh my god, that's the fucking guy, Testa. Like watching him play was like watching one of those pieces of shit on like a movie. Play quarterback, he just like all obsessed with himself. He's just like out there fucking up. Gives a shit. I'm rich. Fuck my god. You know, he just like it, it's, oh, I just I hated him. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If, it, if I'm thinking about the wrong quarterback, I apologize. But I think it was Testaverde. That name rings a bell because mm-hmm. I remember just watching those games and just like, yo, this dude sucks. Like, why is he our quarterback? And then he got he got blasted in the headlines. I think that was the guy. If I'm thinking about the wrong quarterback, I apologize to all the fans. But um, if it's the right guy, then he fucking sucks. He fucking well, it could sucks. be Elvis Gerback. It could be Gerback, and actually, it might be. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm a little. I'm a little uh, out here in these streets. <laughs> but um, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Yo. It, either way, one of the motherfuckers. Like, I remember. Like, I had these sponge bricks that I had to get because um, I was in danger of breaking televisions. You know. I get passionate. And um, so I remember ripping this brick in half watching these two things. And it was like this, like, pretty decently, you know, foam because I got it from the stadium. It was like a nice little, and I ripped that bitch in half. Since we're talking about sports. <laughs> what you want to say? Look, I'm glad you did. <laughs> I'm glad <laughs> you did. Yeah. So now, now that we're on the same page, in the aftermath of the money. Yeah, see, I knew it. I knew it. What do you what do you feel? What do you feel about the fight? I know you're saying it at this point. What do you feel about the fight? I found out through other people that the like the that the that the May, we're talking about the Mayweather and McGregor fight. And so someone said, "Hey, are you going to watch it?" And it's like on a Friday because of course it was on Saturday. I'm like, "Whoa, I didn't know it was a Saturday." So I went ahead. I tried to look for it, you know through various oceans. And, uh, you know, I couldn't, I, I found, I found some stuff, but, you know, sometimes in life things just don't work out and, um, it just wasn't working out for me. So I had to watch it the next day. Shout out to the Russians. So, um, that's how I watched it. But overall, I was kind of shocked at how long it took. Other than that, though, um, I mean, it, it was entertaining. I mean, it wasn't the most um, exciting fight. I will say that um, 
McGregor was more, I guess, a bit more technical than what I thought he would be, kind of, sort of, although, I mean, he's, he, I mean, I don't know, I feel like that's kind of like the same get-up he, had, he has when he's trying to box um, in the Isaac arm instead of, like, the ring, but it was okay. It just seemed like he was, I feel like he was time enough. He should have had a boxing coach with him this entire time. Um, as prepared as you would, as he'd like to present himself to be, he should have had a boxing coach this entire time. Like this has been, a, it was a two year build up before they even said we were going to fight. I mean, the rest was quick. It was like, going to fight in the summertime. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, and the press tour was amazing. Like he should have had a boxing coach the entire time. Like if I was him, like he, the shit that he was doing in the UFC, he knows that. That's not fucking bad. You know? So like this thing, you should have had a boxing trainer going forward. And then when the fight was when he got a boxing trainer eventually. He didn't style one. That's insane to me. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So yeah, the technical aspect is definitely there. However, he hadn't been accl- he hadn't acclimated to the breathing a- aspect of it. And I, I, I honestly assume he's going to be more prepared than that. Um, and he said it very very well, I think, in the post fights, talking about how he was so composed and how he was making him work more than he was working. And, and that's what we know about Mayweather. And it's different when you're in there with him. And um, I feel, honestly, I, what I got to say is Mayweather did great. Um... He did great at executing the strategy, which was to do nothing as much as possible to still make it entertaining, but to know that dude was going to fade. And he did almost like clockwork. Like, when I said 25th minute, it was like pretty much done. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And when he swam in, like the shark, he was in the rain, he, oh, like it is what it is. Uh, he put him away, and uh, if he didn't, I don't think it would have worked him out. For me, mm-hmm. like that, he, was in a, he had to put him away. And I don't feel like when people say, you know, you know, man, it was an insane fight. Even if I don't say that fight was all said, yeah, it's a good fight. Because he had Mayweather's pocket, and that's something that no one's ever seen before. Like, had he ever been able to stay? Suppose people say, oh, no, nah, they didn't have to. Yeah, if he hadn't gotten tired. Like, if he was in there with Conor McGregor, the boxer, he'd have lost. He'd have lost. But he wasn't. So, and that's not a possibility. So, it doesn't matter. You know, he definitely beat him. I mean, absolutely. No no question. Uh, I, don't, I don't feel like stoppages early in boxing. That was an appropriate stoppage. So, I understand mm-hmm. what Conor McGregor is saying about that. But in boxing, that's appropriate. And it's a two-dozen. So, you know, that's what they do. You know, you, you, you can... People... Mayweather would have just kept hitting you. You know, and Mayweather was tired. He was tired. Mayweather couldn't have gone too long anyway. So if Connick still got his feet underneath other and kind of weather that's gone, that would have been interesting. But uh, Mayweather was tired. Even in the bull fights, the way he was talking and shit, he was tired. That dude was tired. Hmm. Um, his accuracy started to wane as the rounds went on. His power went up. But that's why his accuracy. He sacrificed one for the other. He usually doesn't do it. Um, but that's the analytics that people don't talk about because, you know, it's the Mayweather heavy thing. And the cocksucking um, promotion at Showtime is just so ridiculous. <laughs> like, I'm serious, like, you're literally watching a fight, dude. You should have been there. Like, I'm screaming at the screen. I'm saying, I don't fucking where I pay half of 100 fucking dollars for this thing, right? And then I ain't talking big. I'm talking about one half of the fucking fight. Where's the other $50 for this fight? You know what I'm saying? Like, he's parrying. He's he bothering and leaving. Brilliantly in the middle of the ring, and they're not even talking about it because they ride, they ride, they ride stick. They're just talking about him. Not even the fight that he's currently in. Other ones. I'm like, mm-hmm. yo, what the fuck? Like it was, it was, it's the worst. It was the worst. And I honestly, I felt like in that promotion, they should have had a USC guy uh, on the side. Like I would have loved to her, like Mike Goldberg, uh, if not Joe Rogan, um, on the side of the ring, or or fucking somebody. You know what yeah, I mean? That's a, like, yes, that's, that's a good point. They should have had a USC guy on 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 ringside uh, for commentary because these fucking guys are just, of course, they only going to talk about Mayweather. Like they weren't talking about Connor at all, and they should have been somebody to be the objective, yeah. objectively, um, to speak on the behalf of that fight. And there wasn't, and I, and I felt. But again, Cox fucking promotion at Showtime, and I really feel like Connor did a good job of exposing that during the press conference. Like, <clears throat> like I said, a lot a lot of things happened in that fight. Um, and I really feel bad for the UFC now. Like, 
<laughs> they got to start paying them motherfuckers, dog. Like they, <laughs> mm. Connor then changed the spectrum of the hip hop, quote unquote. <laughs> That's it. Well, let's let's talk about a more um, important fight right now. I, I've been meaning to uh, get your input on this. Uh, what do you think about the Comier and uh, John Jones fight? Uh, okay, what, what, what are we talking about? Because you just made me mad. Like I don't even want to know. What part? Are we talking about the fight itself? Okay, the fight itself. That was a great night. Uh, it was a great night. Um, uh, I spent time with the kids. You know. Uh, me and the wifey, we've been having for a long time, so we was out to get a night and having an awesome, it was a great fight, it went the way I wanted it to go, even better than I could have hoped, and, you know, everything's great, and Cloud Nine with the aspect of this fight, and the memory of it, at least, and then you, 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 you get an alert on your phone, fucking choose the dope. <laughs> Man, are you serious? I wish I was big just once. I would go find John Jones and I would punch him in his mouth so hard, he never talk right again. I'm, I'm talking about Kanye West and this man with my bad hand. Seriously, yo. I want to set his shit backwards. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? You know how many people put everything they had and believe in your stupid ass? Like, I mean, not me. I mean, there's people that did put everything they had and believe in you and you did this twi- again, yo? Fuck him, yo. His career is done. I don't, I don't want to see him fight. Cause no, I don't believe nothing now. Like, you're not real, yo. Your legacy is through. Like, you, you're done. They can't put you in the Hall of Fame. Like, nothing. You, 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 it was all for nothing. And I hope you don't commit suicide. You know, genuinely. Like, you know what I'm saying? He, he still is an athlete. And, I mean, regardless of the cutting edge, you know, most of the motherfuckers wouldn't have beat him anyway. Um, and the shit he gets accused of using... Don't even be like shit that help him during the fight. It's like shit to help him during training. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, I'm being dead serious. So, I mean, it, it's a sketchy line there, you know, but it, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Call me a loss. Um, call me a win to be a win. Like, um, if they fought the first time, like he said, when I think it was supposedly on roids and coke on, at the same time, and he lost, and this time he had something that was supposed to just to help him during training, and you lost. Like, just let it the fuck go, you chump bitch. You lost. You can't beat John Jones. Like, I'm serious. They need to just fight in the streets. They need to just find each other somewhere and just bang out, you know what I mean, on some real shit and then just take care of it because, like, he's never going to feel satisfied. He's never going to get satisfaction until he knows whether or not he can beat him for real. And he'll say whatever he wants in his interviews is, I don't know. I haven't followed. I've just been so disgusted. I don't even want to hear what that bitch got to say. And, uh, and to me, he's a good guy, but fuck him, you know? And like, like I just like Jones better. I don't know. Come here, good guy. No disrespect to him, the wife his family. But, you know, um, and the spirit of sport is in competition. Fuck that. Well, well, I mean, I'm just saying. I mean, well, see, the thing was when 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 Jones was trying to get himself together, I was root, I was rooting for him all the way. The thing is, though, I, I wanted Cormier to win because I feel like, I mean, like, he's been he's been sweating, working his ass off, you know, especially, like, the, the, uh, the, the, um, the, that battle with Anthony Johnson and everything he had to go through <laughs> to win that. <laughs> and so, I mean, like, he's been sweating his ass, you know, and Jones is just trying to get, like, his, his, his discipline together. And so, like, when it comes to that, you know, I wanted, I mean, I, I was rooting for both of them when they fought. But you know, I I just felt like um, I don't know, Cormier, but he's been he's been working to keep it, and then he still wanted to go up against John Jones because I think I feel like with other, like a lot of other fighters, they probably would have um, you know, probably discounted John Jones because uh, because of his personal battle. But Cormier, you know, he he made a dichotomy between the both. Although of course he knew that um, you know, he technically didn't get the title because you know Jones, you know, uh. You know, got you know, couldn't have it or lost it because of the same type of shit. But, but I don't know. I I feel like though, like I feel like Cormier is kind of like Tyron Woodley. Like Woodley has been able, like the the fight before this last one, he's been having the fight. That last fucking fight he had was crazy. I can't even remember the guy's name, but he struggled. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah, dang, yeah, it was him. And, yeah, he struggled so hard to keep that shit. So I just be rooting for fucking Cormier and um and 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 uh, Tyron Woodley because they fucking had to fight for that shit. 
and then and then even doing interviews, well, like Woodley when he was talking about like racism after that fight, in the UFC and everything like that, and then Cormier, you know, he's fucking, you know, beating like you know, got his ass beat by Anthony Johnson, but Anthony Johnson doesn't have any cardio, and then after he does that, you know, by earning like the shit that he got at the sweating like, the way he did. A fucking press person will say, well, what do you think about John Jones? Or some shit like that. I mean, they're going to manipulate because they got to get their money. You know what I'm saying? But, first of all, Tyron would be me is boring. Uh, you fucking kidding me, dog? Like, the highlight that they show for Tyron would be me is up there. And they even show what he's done lately. And lately, it's been five round fights where he's put his face in Kevin Bell. Tyron is boring. I mean, I'm talking about what I'm saying. I don't fight, so if you kick my ass, of course. <laughs> Wouldn't even break a sweat doing it. You know what I mean? But, like, I'm just saying, to watch him fight, it's boring. It's fucking boring. Like, I kind of want to Daniel Maia to win, to be honest. Or at least get him in a chokehold to make him fight his way out of it. Like, at least put Daniel Maia out like he's a grappler. Like, you're, you're, I don't even see. What the fuck? Uh, when you talk about he struggles with getting, he shouldn't. That's the problem. But like, there's no reason Tyron Woodley should be struggling to do a damn thing for him. But see, like, but he's, I, in ex- he's in great shape. He's a knockout artist. He's powerful in his hands. You're going against a guy who you know is trying to get you to the ground. That's what he's trying to do. Why is this a five-round fight? Why is this a five-round fight, Tyrone? Go on okay. and fucking fight so you can go home. Okay, but see, all that's true. But at the same time... You can say all you want about, you know, the division, maybe the division just being weak or whatever you want to say, right? But at the end of the day, he keeps winning. I understand that, you know, and I really do. And in the dichotomy of that, yeah, you, you're a champion and you got dubbed. However, we're talking about combat sports, you know? It's not just getting the kill, it's how you kill it. Like, I'm sorry, it's combat sports, it's entertainment. You are not entertaining. They're going to find somebody to come in there and knock you the fuck out. That's what they do, right? They're going to give them a warm-up fight where you're going to knock somebody out that we kind of know, right? Or remember, mm-hmm. right? And then they're going to put him in a championship fight with you, and he's going to knock you out. And then that guy's going to run for a minute. And, you know, who, who knows how long they'll keep it, but it'll at least make it interesting again. Because what you're doing right now is not interesting. Yeah, you know, I mean, just cruising through. It's not interesting. I'm sorry. Like, I understand. I get it, but it, this is the sport. This is the job. You know, it's, it's not like football, you know? It's not like football. And even in, in even in football, you know, they, they have a problem when the teams are just barely winning unless they go to the Super Bowl or some shit like that. You know what I mean? But they make their money back in all these other different types of ways. You know, they, they, they can spin that in football. And boxing is the same way. Like, if your fights are kind of lackluster, but you get in W, you don't even hear about so many people. They got great records, amazing records, but you don't hear about them because the fights well, are yeah, Well, I mean, well, well, yeah, so, I mean, like, even, like, I mean, you could probably, you know, say that Mighty Mouse kind of falls within that category. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's had some, he's had, he's had his moments, and, like, in his fights, um, he faces actual adversity. Like, he gets popped sometimes, you know what I'm saying? And he drops down. And he gets back up and does his thing. That's kind of like Frankie Edgar. You know what I mean? Like, Frankie Edgar bangs, fam. Like, I love watching Frankie Edgar fight. Like, that dude goes through it. So, you know, it's some people that, like, have that mighty mouse, like you're saying, you know what I mean, where it's, it's a technical battle. But at the same time, when you appreciate the sport to the level that I do, and you see that, then then you see work. But when you have somebody that's, that can knock you out by punching you, that's clearly stronger than the other individual, it's like, why is this a fight? Why are you doing this? You don't, you're not Mighty Mouse. You Tyrone Woodley. Go in there and pop his motherfucking ass. Like, that should have been a mop. Like, everybody been running their mouth and talking about you, and you you make it a five-round fight. You He made it. I don't care what nobody said. He made that a five-round fight, because he can go in there and knock that dude out. Straight up. So, I I, 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 you know, I don't get it. The real kicker is um Hendon Burrell. Like, What's up with that? Man, he tried to, what, didn't he try to come back in that on that card and he got he got knocked out or he lost? Uh, pretty much. 
Like him and Murat, like it, what is that that happens with fighters? Like it's like once they lose one time, if they was on if they was on the high streak, like they're not gonna say. I mean that's that's just what happens. I mean it's a whole psyche thing. I mean do you I mean do you think that Ronda Rousey can can get back if she comes back? It was born watching Ronda Rousey fight. So mm-hmm. what they did with Ronda Rousey was they found a boxer, a damn good boxer, a championship boxer, and they put a championship boxer in there. And she knocked her out. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, see, I felt the same way, too, because then the next time Holly Holm came around, with she had to defend that shit. <laughs> it was a wrap. Misha Tate had to have her run, you know, and, and you got it. Misha Tate was going to retire. They had to give Misha Tate something. You know, Misha Tate's been hanging off of, hanging around behind um, Ronda Rousey for a long time. They knew Misha Tate could beat her, because Misha Tate can go into deep water. You know what I'm saying? And Misha Tate's been fighting for a long time. She's more technical. She's got more experience. They knew Holly would beat um, Ronda because Ronda would come in too hot because she always wins. And, you know, she would pick her apart with her boxing technique and um, prowess, which she did, which we know is true now after the Mayweather uh, for the fight. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's all a game and it, it's all chess. You know, it's just the pieces that you put there, you know, see, you know, see how they play. And it usually goes the way you think. That's why Tyron would be born. <laughs> 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 like, Tyron would be born. Like, they didn't even want to give them that fight. They did not want to give uh, Damian Maia a fight. Damian Maia was on a, a, a win streak. I'm like, seven, uh, some fights. Like, he had a couple fights um, in a row consecutive. He put together a nice little thing for himself. And, um, they, you know, they they really didn't, yeah, okay, well, fight him, then you'll get it. You know, they didn't want to give him that fight. Um, and then they finally gave it to him, and they assumed that it would just be like a knockout. Like Tyron Willie would go in there and just pop him and knock him out. And that's not what we got at all. We got something that looked like competition. Mm-hmm. It was mainly just a lot of like moving around and making sure he don't, you know, don't grab me. Don't grab me. Yo, get off me, yo. Like, oh, wait, so, so going back to Cormier real quick and um, John Jones. So does Cormier get the, get the belt back? Because I haven't been following it after I like saw the headline. No, I haven't been following either. And um, I don't feel like he should. Uh, I feel like he should fight somebody for it. Um, Javante Davis, the gentleman from Baltimore, um, when he couldn't make weight, they took his belt away from him. He fought. He won. He didn't get the belt back, you know, so he's got to fight the next opponent to get the belt back. So, Cormier lost. You know, that was a sanctioned fight. You know, he lost. Like, that's what happened. You know, uh, John Jones doped up. Okay, that sucks, whatever, but you're not the champion. You lost. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, you got to fight for the belt again. Like, you, you, nobody would, I mean, they already weren't calling him the true champion. You know what I'm saying? When he, when John Jones left the belt vacant and he fought and, you know, won it the first time. So, no, he, he's got to fight. He's, that's what he is. He's a fighter. Unfortunately. Um, unfortunately. Should he fight for it? No. Oh, should Cormier fight for it? I think he should. I don't think he should. Because, He's not going to get, like, it, it's going to be begrudged. Like, people still aren't going to like him. I don't know what it is about Cormier that people just don't like. I guess it's because he's too clean. You know what I'm saying? Because, honestly, I didn't used to like John Jones, if you remember. Um, and it may have been for the same reason, because he was just too perfect. Nobody likes perfect. Nobody likes perfect. That's why they wanted John Jones to come back every time he fucked up. Now well, it's like, nah. Well, I think that's a good point, because I think that's one of the reasons why I like Cormier, because he just seems, well, at least he seems like... It's kind of the Daniel Cormier character is what I don't like. Like he, there's interviews and um, little snippets and stuff that he puts online. Uh, I kind of like those because it seems like he's being a little bit more natural. And and I understand respecting quote unquote the cloth or the I should say the belt. You know what I'm saying? You're a champion. You should perform like a champion and act like a champion. I really do. But this is again combat sports. So my nigga, come on, bring the real, bring the noise. You know what I mean? Let's let's see what's popping. Like stop, stop with all that smooth but then, shit. I mean, but then, I mean, but at the end, of, at the end of the day, when it comes to Cormier, though, I mean, he's still technically number two. I mean, even if John Jones is still number one. Yeah. So, but that's what I'm saying. That's why he shouldn't fight for it because he'll always be number two. Like it doesn't but, matter. It, but, it, if, but if, it if, never if, will matter. The legacy because of John Jones, the legacy between these two men will never be settled. And John Jones is a piece of shit for that. Nothing that Daniel Cormier does will ever solidify him as a champion because he never beat John Jones. Nothing that John Jones does has ever done can ever be adequately accepted as 
champion worthy because he's been accused of doping throughout the entire process. The entire legacy of that whole feud and battle and all of it is fucked because of John Jones. I know that. So I know nothing that. Nothing that Cormier does is going to matter. So if he, even if he wins the belt in an amazing fashion, right, against all improbable odds, like he's done, and you mentioned it. I mean, well, I mean, at least right now, but then you got to think about the, you know, just the way you're talking about John Jones' legacy, you got to think about Cormier' legacy. So if Cormier gets the belt back and he still, you know, all, even if he struggles, at this point, I think right now the only person that could probably do it is Anthony Johnson if he gets his cardio up. The thing is, though, every other person, if he keeps doing the same thing he's doing, then you would have to at least, we were talking about regulation and everything like that, right? Just based on the technicalities of just the fact that he wins and the percentage of it. If he can, if he continues to do that after this whole John Jones thing, then you just gotta, unfortunately, you know, give him some kind of recognition over time. I don't think it's going to happen right now because, you know, legacies over time, they, they get broken down, they get restored, or they just get broken down over time, even if they were good, you know, when the legacy, you know, became what it was. I agree. No, uh, I agree. And and if I'm speaking as if I don't believe that he should fight for his legacy, that's not what I mean. Mm-hmm. I just mean it's not going to make a difference. Um, numbers-wise, yeah, absolutely. I mean, numbers-wise, first of all, Daniel Cormier is a beast. I'm not saying that. Like, like Daniel Comey was a beast. He he fought. He I remember watching him on that um the that under promotion before he got to the UFC. I remember watching him beat uh, what's his name Garrett, uh, who eventually came to, came back to the UFC, um, who was a champion prior like years ago. Um, I remember watching him beat that dude. Just like slam him all over. It was nothing. He just whooped his dude's ass. And this is a, this dude was nice, like you know, it was like tournament style um, with this promotion. And this dude was nice. They fought their way to each other. He, he's slamming him all over the ring. I don't know why him do it. And then next, you know, he's in the UFC, and I couldn't believe it. He rips through the UFC. Um, the only person he ever lost to was John Jones. You know what I'm saying? We still make him solid, absolutely 100 percent solid. You know what I'm saying? And it, 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 it's no question that his legacy is is, is solidified in the UFC. He's been a model champion. He really has. It's just me, okay? It's just me. And I just need somebody to be a little bit more fucked up. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I just don't trust person. I don't trust person. <laughs> I, need, I need to be a little more fucked up. It's just me. John Jones is, is a dirtbag because he was too fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just need to have a little bit of edge. The edge that he came back with was enough. That's all you need. That, that, that edge was enough. Mm-hmm. But you mm-hmm. fucked it up. Apparently, it's edge because you was high. <laughs> All right. So, um, no man, you good, man, you good. So yeah, so all right, we've touched uh, at this point. We've touched uh, sports, podcasting slash um, entrepreneurship. Actually, th- this is something I do want to tell you. And I could probably wait until it's offline, but just to tell you right now, um, the, have you, do you, um, are you like uh, privy to any kind of like podcast music? Le- I mean, letters like newsletters, like um, letters on like the podcasting industry. So, from what I know, at least one of the main ones is uh, a dude by the name of Nick Qua, uh, Q U A H. And um, he has this uh, podcast newsletter. Um, it comes out every Tuesday, and of course, you can like pay more money uh, to uh, to get like extra like extra like content, extra like writings from him. But other than that, though, he comes out with this podcast every Tuesday, and it's about just everything going on with the podcast industry from like different people um, or companies like coming up or whatever like that. If like the New York Times or whatever is going into podcasting, or Oprah, as you've uh, said. Uh, earlier and everything like that and so yeah it's just like an int- it's like a good and then he has like um interviews with like people like just random people in the podcast industry so it could be like you know a freelance person that like has had like a good gig just doing things with different podcasts but it's not like of course not like a, like not even like a household name in the podcast community so that's something like to, interesting to look at for 
I mean, even like different ideas, I get different kind of ideas from it, from the way I want to maybe, you know, go about doing things or whatever like that. No, that's just good. I'll have to pee. Yeah, yeah. All right, y'all. So with that all being said, this is uh this is still a bit shorter compared to uh the last episode we did, but nonetheless we hit you with some technology, some technology talk, some sports talk, some reflection talk, which I think some of y'all like. You know, when y'all, it, I think it kind of harkens back to when me and Artic used to do these reflection talks about just things about life or whatever like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this for the ones who may have been waiting for more of a guest themed episode since I don't really have those anymore although I do have one more in the vault but uh whatever that, that doesn't even matter so with that said this has been another edition of the channel 10 podcast uh check us out at channel 10 podcast.com uh hit me up at channel 10 podcast at gmail.com uh if you have some comments about the show or whatever like that uh channel 10 pod on twitter and check out the Wu-Tang Podcast. Wu-Tang Podcast on SoundCloud, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, uh, pretty much wherever you get your podcast. Check that out, too. With that being said, uh, we will catch you guys on the next episode. We out. Peace.